and welcome to Lincolnshire Vencraft's needle felting tutorials. Pumpkin season is upon us and as you all know I love a pumpkin and this year in addition to the normal sort of pumpkin um, tutorial that I've done for you this is an additional one which is the autumn wreath and I absolutely love this it looks so professional it looks like it's straight out of a magazine yet as always it is really super super simple to make and the finished result is just brilliant so all you will need is um, just grab whatever wool you've got lying around um, if you've got carded wool and wool tops brilliant if not just whatever you've got will work you can that's the great thing with needle felting is you can always make whatever you've got work um, if you are working from the the new kit or the wool bundle then you'll have this gorgeous box which is full of lovely lovely lush beautiful wools there's 10 different colors in there um two different types of wool you'll also have your core wool in there as well you'll have your uh, ribbon and your acorns some instructions and of course your trusty wooden skewer which um i'll explain what that will be used for in a in a wee while so if you're working from that all well and good and like i said if you're not just grab whatever you've got um, the core wool I'm using is it's this sort of short, um, soft core wool. It's carded. It's just a, a blend of, of everything, really. Um, but you can use whatever you've got to hand. And you because the pumpkins are quite small, as you can see, um, we are going to fold this in and make this a lot smaller. We only need a small amount because once we've just created a very rough shape for the core, we're then going to be using some carded wool bats to wrap the pumpkin. So I'm just going to move these out of the way. Put these over there. All you'll need, as far as tools are concerned, is a felting mat. Anything will do. Foam, hessian mat, wool mat. Just a topper will do fine because it's 3D felting. We're not doing any flat felting. So it's just somewhere to protect your needle and act as support and uh, protect the surface that you're working on. So I've just got a hessian mat here with one of my um, wool toppers on uh, sat on the top of it, which um, I always recommend because it just protects whatever mat you're using whether it's foam or hessian always try and use some sort of topper some sort of piece of flat felt just to, to make it last about 10 times longer and then here just one needle this is a 38 star and it's a good all-rounder great for most jobs and it's the one that I use all the time so the first thing we're going to do is create a really rough sort of um, circular ball shape which is slightly flatter but like a, um i would say we're going sort of a small satsuma size here but you can see the size of that in my palm you don't want it too big because we're putting five of them on and we don't want them to swamp the vine wreath we want to see that coming through so just grab this wool and just pull it all in towards the center and take your needle watching your fingers and just gently felt until that holds keep it moving pull that wool in I'm just going to take this topper off so you can just see the contrast and this is ever so quickly done because it really hardly needs any felting you just felting with the needle just so it holds its shape because it's going to be covered up, so don't worry about any rough areas, any lumps and bumps. It will all be covered. And as we pull the wool batting around it quite tightly, it will bring that shape in. And as always, start with less wool than you think you need. You can always add more, but um, this is going to be about the right. It doesn't want to be any bigger than this, this, this core. So that's it that's ready to be wrapped now i've got here in your in your kit you've got five different colors 
um, and as you can see here I've used just one colour for this one but I just wanted to show you how to blend wool bats because they're in layers so what you can do is you can actually just pull pull them apart so you've got a much thinner layer and can you see how you can actually see through some of that And you can stretch it out even further to make that even more visible. And we don't need a lot, so I'm just going to pull that off. And then do the same with a contrasting colour. So this is like a, a sort of burnt orange, really beautiful um, burnt sort of orange red. If you've done the fire and ice pumpkin, if you look on the pumpkin playlist, you will see the tutorial for the fire and ice pumpkin and I've used this which is is gorgeous stuff and I will pop a link to the playlist below for you as well as well as the um the kit um if you fancy popping across and having a look at the website if you haven't got any of the kit or the um the tools so can you see the difference how that beautiful red sort of burnt orange is coming through and I'm thinking we'll actually wrap we'll have that underneath and then we'll have the orange on top so what we've got is we've got different colours coming through and I'm just going to pull that apart even more just so we've got more of the underneath visible there we go and I love that effect. I think that's really, really effective. And you can um, you can do that with all of them or, or keep them, you know, just a nice plain colour. But if you just want to do something different, then that's a great way to, to blend your wool bats. So I'm going to turn it that way because we're going to wrap over like so. And here's our little piece of core pumpkin. Now I've got quite a lot going on here, so I'm just going to pull some more off. And the flat side will have, which will be the top of your pumpkin. So what we're going to do here is, I'm just going to pull in that corner. And I'm just going to gently felt that on. And try and do all, most of your felt work um, at the base of the pumpkin. Um, it doesn't really matter with the batting because um, it's, it's, it doesn't show needle marks at all really when you're working like this so don't worry about that I've got quite a lot going on here so I'm just going to pull that over again so you're just going around and pulling in these edges again and because it's carded it pulls away really easy because the fibres are really short compared to say the the wool top but if you want to use wool top absolutely fine do the core exactly the same and then you can wrap the wool top around the same way but what you can do is actually just do probably a crisscross of layers or blend it like so and then you can actually wrap that around that way so there's always it doesn't matter what wool you've got you can make it work but I, I really do like the um, carded bats for this because it's just um, makes it easier to work with and easier to get that that neater finish you just spend less time doing it yeah, I'm just going to pop my topper back on so look at that glorious glorious color and you see that sort of burnt orange red coming through that lighter orange where we pulled those fibers apart and it's it's absolutely gorgeous so now what i'm going to do is we need to create our pumpkin lines which also creates that really nice um, easily recognizable pumpkin shape so i'm just looking i think i'm going to go with this rust Wool top. Now this is where wool top is really useful. You take the thinnest piece, again if you're working from the box you'll have five colours in there so you just decide whatever you want to do. You can twizzle the, the middle if you want which will actually mat it together a little bit but it doesn't really matter. 
just lay that on the top of your pumpkin and just the best way to do it is hold just hold it down like that aim for the middle and just a few pokes you see that until that holds and flip it over and bring it round and pull it in slightly so you want it quite tight and that's why wool tops work really well because you've got long lengths and they don't break you can do it with carded wool of course but this just makes it the job a bit easier as i said the fibers are long and you can pull it in quite tightly without without it breaking but if 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 you are using carded wool and and it does break then all you need to do is you can just create these these little indents by just actually felting um along the lines but with the wool top there's no need for that it just naturally pulls that in so just leave any loose bits and then we go back you take another piece again across the center poke that down into the middle pull that around can you see how that's pulling that shape in and the other side pulling that shape in there we go and then we're going to do that twice more very thin layers i mean really thin pull that might be a bit too thin but i'm sure we can work with that again across the center use that center line as your guide and we're not going to add any stalks to these because i want it to keep it quite clean um not cluttered because you know there's quite a few bits going on on the actual wreath but if you want to see how to make the stalks and the leaves just have a look at my traditional pumpkin tutorial and after you've actually created the pumpkin on that video then I show you how to make the leaves and the stalks which are also really really easy and last piece Pull that in, you see how that's pulling that shape in? And then you can just, I mean you can trim those off if you want, but if there's only a few wispy bits, just poke them in. And there you go. Fabulous pumpkin shape. And then if you've got any bits that sort of, if you're a bit of a perfectionist and you want to poke in any bits that you think, oh, that's a little bit untidy, just go in diagonally with your needle and just draw that down. But try and draw everything towards the base and then that leaves that top really nice and smooth. But if you do, um, if you are using wool top, I think this is Corriedale, so it's nice. It's um, it's it's not as fine as merino. It's a blend of merino and Lincoln long wool, so you get that nice coarse um, Lincoln long wool with the the lovely sort of luster of the merino. It's um, you know, particular sheep breed. And if you are using the wool tops and you find you've got lots of needle marks, before you actually put these um, pumpkin lines on, just roll it around in your hands and it will um, it will smooth those. And you can also just use your needle to tease anything. Now, if it's a bit flat, I mean, this one's OK, but if it's a bit flat, you can actually just squish it to improve the shape. So it fills out a little bit. And if you want more of... 
an indentation in the center there to really sort of accentuate that shape just keep fo uh, poking with the needle so that it actually goes a little bit deeper can you see that okay and that is it that's that's a really simple way of of making a pumpkin doesn't get much easier than that so you've made a pumpkin and as you can see on this wreath we've got them here and we've got these gorgeous acorns so if you've got this um kit you you've got the acorn caps already in there now these are unbelievably easy to make and the trick is getting the shape right that sort of um oval shape nice sort of soft edges well not even edges just that really nice nice sort of acorny shape and they don't want to be too big and the easiest way to create that really nice acorn shape is to use a wooden barbecue skewer you will have seen this in my video tutorials you can use this for so much it is the best needle felting tool whether you're brand new to needle felting whether you're an experienced felter this comes in so handy so I'm just going to use this gorgeous rust that I've got here and you don't need a lot of wool in fact I think that will be too much so I'm just going to take um, a little bit off the end and with them um, wool tops keep your fingers away from where you're pulling because if you pull like so it, it all those fibers lock together so hold your hands apart and just pull away and if you want doesn't really you don't really have to but if you want you can just twizzle the end to make it easier to grab hold of and then all you do is wrap that around your wooden stick now keep this wool flat don't let it twist you don't want it twisting because then it separates um you know the, the shape becomes separated into twisted pieces so you want to keep it flat and then what you can do is just let that wool run between your fingers and have you noticed i haven't even used the felting needle yet so keep it nice and tight and just twizzle it a little way around and once you get about halfway through you can just use your needle just a few times to secure it and keep your thumb and your finger there at the base so that when you're turning it it doesn't escape and run away and get really long you're aiming for an acorn shape what you don't want to end up with is um you know sort of a, a worm like shape can you see that that is it so now we're going to secure it so that's why i've gone on to the the wool tops for the acorns because you can pull it quite tight again without the um the wool breaking away as it, as it it may do if you're using carded wool however this is carded wool this is carded wool it's still great for making these but if you just just for speed i'm using the wool tops and it really is horses for courses you know it's personal preference if you really want to learn about all the different types of wools if you pop over to my blog i've got an ultimate guide to needle felting it's a great blog and there is actually if you look on the menu the drop down menu you'll see there is a, a a guide to to wool there's a guide to felting needles there's free tutorials uh beginners sort of advanced beginners intermediate tutorials there's everything you need on there loads and loads of free resources to get you going and to help you improve your existing needle felting skills really really good blog so feel free to to go over and i'll pop the link down below so can you see how i am shaping this i'm just using the needle at a diagonal angle keeping that shape moving so you don't flatten any areas so you can do an acorn in easily in three minutes and then just slide that off 
and that is it that is your acorn done and then i have on here so on here i've got one two three four i've got five pumpkins two four six eight nine ten eleven and eleven acorns and three of the acorn caps that you can see there i've stuck those together with um i use a glue gun i don't mess about um i like to just get things done quickly so a glue gun is the best thing but if you've just got fabric glue then you can do that as well just pop some fabric glue inside the acorn cap and just let it go tacky for for five ten minutes and then you're not sitting there you know holding the acorn so that's absolutely fine as well so you've got your acorns you've got your pumpkins you've got your wreath you can use whatever you've got that actually is is in your kit if you've ordered the kit you will have that and then I think it probably took me longest to find out how I wanted to style it and really it's it's simple as always is the best pumpkins at the top so the top third at slightly different angles so what I did was I popped some glue on the um on the actual wreath itself stuck the acorn uh, the pumpkin down started with the center one moved out and then just stuck the acorns around it as well tied a little bit of hessian ribbon on stuck that again on with a glue gun if you don't have any glue you could actually sew these on um with this wreath because you can actually pop your needle through the vine leaves so that that would work as well you don't actually need glue you can sew everything on so don't worry if you haven't got the glue it doesn't matter and i think that is about it um 21 22 minutes that took with all my waffling in between so very little time at all and as you can see i think it took me about an hour and a half to make the entire thing so i'll pop a materials list below and all the details and the links so that you can go off and find other video tutorials and the materials and kits if you want them so um have a great autumn or fall and enjoy needle felting and join me again very soon.